ones we've concentrated on so far is what we call the string of pearls, which are all of these basin bounded fault uh, plays up against the massive uh, basin bounded fault. So again, we're two for two so far with Danny and Puya. Um, I know most of you aren't geophysicists, and I'll apologize now that you're going to see a lot of seismic lines. When I see a boat keeps coming and taking all the seismic lines off, nobody understands what they are. But as a, ge as a geologist, geophysicist, they're just too pretty for me not to put in. But basically, this is a slice through the earth. These are the bumps that we're drilling. So this is the Tuiga well we just tested. This one here is the Gamia well. And the one in between is a Kalas. This is the one we're going to drill next. So again, I can, I can talk, I can tell geology tell you geology is pretty simple because I am a geologist and I, 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 can, uh, I, I can say that sometimes it's as easy as just putting one on the next bump over. So every one of these bumps, we think there's a pretty good chance of being an oil field. Um, if you look at this clay in Uganda, um, uh, our partner Kelly drilled eight of these prospects in Uganda and they had a 100% success rate. Every well they drilled on that basin boundary clay was successful. Um, the other side of the basin is what we're going to start doing next. In fact, the next well we're going to spud in this campaign is on this, this prospect here called Ipiko. Also apologize for the people that uh, um, are, are here, have, have lived through the story. The government seems to want to change our prospect names every few weeks just to confuse us. So for those of you who have been around for a while, this is what we, we used to call Kamba. So this is the other side of the basin we call the ramp play. Uh, we like this side because the structures are two to three times the size of the, of the ones that are in the, uh, the string of pearls. So we're quite keen on this. This will be, we're bringing the rigs from Pai Pai right now to spud that well. Hopefully spudding uh, around May 1st. And uh, if we're successful, we can continue on. On this side of the basin, we've got about four drillable prospects that we can go uh, forward on that. So we believe this basin alone is probably contains one to three billion barrels of oil. And I think Kello has been telling the people in the, in the press of that as well. And I think we're going to have a very high success rate now that we've proven that there's a, a, a source rock in the basin. The other thing, of course, that we've done recently is, is prove the reservoir. Um, as I said uh, in the beginning, we were a bit nervous about the reservoir. When we, when we drilled into these rocks, we found very good porosity, 23 to 29%, which we can tell from the logs. Uh, we've got some sidewall cores that seem to, to also agree that these are you know, good, good rocks. But we have a little bit of worry about the permeability. Permeability is just the ability for fluids to flow through the rock. So essentially, meaning how much, what type of flow rates, test rates we can get from the rock. So we had some kind of uh, uh, positive and negative evidence of the permeability. Um, so we were a little bit concerned about whether these rocks had uh, proper reservoir gas on them. So what we've done now, we've taken core. There's the core taken in the, uh, the Tuiga well. What we find is very nice sandstone stained with oil. Um, if you look at it, this is, this is actually a, a little slice of the rock. These are actually individual sand grains uh, in white. And the blue is porosity in between. So permeability is basically interconnected porosity. So you see the way all these blue things run together. Um, if you're a drop of oil, you can find a very easy path through this rock. That's essentially what permeability is. Um, but we've measured that as well. We had indications from our logs that we sent from the uh, MDT test that we thought the permeability might be as low as 50 to 100 millimeter cubes in most of these rocks, which was a bit challenging. It's, it's not great reservoir, and, and uh, um, we were a bit concerned about that. When we actually measured it on the core, we found it was 100 millidarcutes all the way up to 3.2 millidarcutes. And again, I know most of you aren't probably mercy permeability uh, experts, but if you were, you'd be once again very excited. 500 millidarcutes is considered excellent quality reservoir. Anything uh, is good quality reservoir. Anything over a darcy is considered excellent quality reservoir. So we got quite a bit of good reservoir, and I think that's also been uh, substantiated by our testing. And this is a picture of our, our test at uh, Tuiga. We actually tested five different zones. Uh, two of them were in this lower fractured reservoir, which looks like it's going to be a bit more challenging. We did recover oil from it, but at fairly low rates. But the three that were really uh, uh, focused on were the three that were in the upper Lacombe or now called the wearer sand. And we got very good flow rates out of these, uh, significantly better than we were expecting. Uh, uh, the, the, 
is a well acti test at a combined rate of 2,800 barrels a day. But uh, the important thing for us is what's called the productivity index. So when we do the test, we can actually calculate what these reservoirs are capable of producing once we put them on production. And uh, um, the lower test, uh, we, we, uh, the lower zone, we, we estimate at 2,600 barrels a day, the middle zone, 1,600 barrels a day, and the upper zone, 1,000 barrels a day. So we believe we can, to put it, when we put this well on production, we can produce it at 5,000 barrels a day. And that's very commercial, very economic for us. So uh, one of our biggest concerns was the reservoir quality. I don't think we're very concerned about it anymore. And this will have a knock-on effect at Gamia um, Reserve. Uh, we did calculate reserves of gas and pine. You'll see this little pink area is what they gave us for reserves uh, um, of TC of 51 million barrels. Uh, they did that with 100 meters of reservoir and with kind of the old quality K that we were talking about. So we actually think we have a chance to add additional K now that we understand the reservoir and probably higher recovery factors from that K. So I think you'll see a good chance that this number will go up. We also have a nice block here that wasn't included in our reserves, but uh, is considered prospective resources of 137 million barrels. Um, this zone only has 50 meters of K attributed to it, because essentially because we haven't drilled a well in it yet. If we drill a well in that, we find 100 meters of K, this number doubles to 270. We add that to that 50, we might have as much as 300 million barrels in this um, uh, Gamia test zone alone, in this Gamia field. So the reason that number is important, and I think you've heard me say it before, and you've heard Tolo say it, is we need about 300 to 500 million barrels to make an economic project to support a pipeline. So what I'm saying is, Possibly with Gammy alone, we may be at least halfway there. And then once we start adding in some of the other strings of pearls, I think we're getting uh, confident that if we keep hitting the strings of pearls the way we have been, um, just those alone uh, may satisfy a uh, development scenario. So again, there's actually three different reservoirs we're pursuing. The upper one is the Alerworth band, what we used to call Upper Lacombe. This is the reservoir we're going to be concentrating on going forward. It's, it certainly is the shallowest, it's the best quality, uh, and it's, it's the thickest of all the reservoirs. But we do have two other reservoirs. One of them we saw in the Gamia well, which is of the, the Lacombe sand. Uh, we still think that's a potentially good reservoir. Uh, you'll, you will probably remember that Polo hasn't looked at as a potential pay yet, and our reservoir engineers, uh, our reservoir officers, haven't given us credit for that pay yet. But we're still quite keen on it. The black dots here are something we're considering testing in the, uh, uh, the upcoming Gamma test. So the first test we do is going to be in that at Lacombe sand, and we'll see if we can get it to flow at a decent rate, uh, which will give us more uh, uh, confidence in this reservoir. We also, particularly in Quiga, penetrated this fractured tighter reservoir. Um, it's the one we tested in Quiga. It also looked a little more difficult, but uh, we penetrated 800 meters of oil stain section in it in Quiga. So, I would say both of these we see as secondary reservoirs, but potentially very large reservoirs. The reservoir quality isn't as good as the uh, upper sands, but we will be focusing on these, on these upper sands in, the, uh, um, uh, in future wells. And then, um, if, you, if you look at Twiga, Twiga is the, uh, the one we just tested. Um, uh, what we're going to be doing at Twiga, uh, what we did at Twiga is we drilled a well in between. Uh, kind of uh, trying to compromise and hit this section, uh, hit this section in, a, in an optimum position. And what we ended up doing was drilling a well in between that doesn't, didn't really uh, accomplish either. So what we decided in the future is we're really going to site the wells. If we drill this well today, we would put it up here, so basically located uh, on the upper section. We actually hit 70 meters of net porous rock in this well, but only the bottom 30 meters were filled with oil. Uh, because we drilled too far away from the fall, just four kilometers away from this fall. So we are planning to drill an appraisal well this year on Tuga, um, which will go halfway towards the fall. We think that full 70 meters of section should be filled with oil. Um, <coughs> should be filled with oil. So um, if that's the case, this turns into a fairly interesting play. Um, we're estimating uh, internally 150 to 200 million barrels of oil just in these upper sands. Again, this is the well we found those 
during the classic. We did test oil out of the lower zone, but at a fairly low rate. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the thing that gets us interested is that 800 meters of this section, this oil stain throughout. But I, I also think that tells us something about our source rock pumping out oil. Every piece of porosity we've seen, even if it's relatively tough porosity like this, is filled with oil. So I think we've got a very strong source rock pumping out oil. And I think we'll see every bit of porosity filled with oil in this basin. So again, we are concentrating on this, but we're not going to ignore these reservoirs. Um, you'll see we're planning a follow-up later down the uh, Fraser Well that we'll go down and test these reservoirs uh, as well. Now, hi, hi. Uh, I know uh, we have some of calls after a press release saying, uh, basically, what the hell are you talking about? Um, and, and it's true, it, it, it's, a, it's a vague press release and it's vague on purpose uh, because, frankly, we don't know what the hell we're talking about. Um, we know we found some oil there, or light gas, and we found some light oil or gas condensate, one of the two, but we didn't recover any fluid, so we can't tell you which one. Uh, we know we found some reservoir, we, we have long circulation, we long get to saw some good reservoir. We believe that reservoir is filled with hydrocarbons based on the gas code we had and based on the log analysis, uh, but we don't know if it's commercial. Well, unfortunately, we didn't have the proper test equipment at the location. This is very high pressure, 7,200 PSI, and the test equipment we had is only rated to 5,000 PSI, so we're gonna have to bring in test equipment later. But the plan is to bring that in and do a proper test um, and find out if what we have is commercial. But I'm quite convinced we're going to pull hydrocarbons out of that zone I just don't know if we're going to flow light oil or gas condensate, and I don't know if it's going to be a commercial rate. But having said that, we've proven our concept. You know, I think if some of you remember, we looked at the old wells here, and we didn't think they were going to be successful because they were in these tilted fault blocks that leaked out during later movement. So we drilled this old structure, and we have found at the base of this uh, a nice accumulation uh, of oil and gas, oil or gas. Um, so the concept holds, and importantly for the concept holding, we have a number of other Cretaceous uh, prospects to go after. So in my mind, we've, we've proven this Cretaceous clay. We found uh, hydrocarbons for the first time in Kenya in the Cretaceous, you know, which is the same system as the uh, Cedarhead. And we've got a number of other prospects, not only in Block 10A, but we've also got prospects down here in Block 9, where we're 50-50% uh, partners. Um, with our friends at, uh, at Marathon. So I'll go through now, uh, kind of shifting gears, kind of talk about what we had done, now I'll talk about what we're going to do. These are all the potential wells we've identified to drill this year. Uh, we won't necessarily drill all of them this year. Uh, if you see the, uh, the, the ones in yellow are the ones we're actually actively uh, building locations and have committed as firm wells. Some of these other wells will be uh, dependent on what we find in the first wells, uh, whether we see encouragement to go forward. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out is you'll see quite a number of them are down here in the, uh, in the Lokachar Basin. Uh, in fact, about half of our budget and three of our six rigs are going to be dedicated to this basin. So the, the goal there is to drill out some prospect inventory and get enough wells to where we feel pretty comfortable that we've got critical volumes going forward for the zone. We won't necessarily be able to book all of those resources and reserves this year because we'll have to do later appraisal drilling. But uh, I think internally we'll have a pretty good idea this, uh, by the end of this year whether we've got a, a going concern. And as I said, I think just in the string of pearls we feel fairly confident we'll be able to get there. Um, the other effort we're going to be doing is really opening new basins. So the other three rigs that we're going to have are going to be drilling in new basins. Uh, the most important one we're drilling right now is Sabisa. So Sabisa is potentially trying to open up the Turkana Basin, which is the, the largest basin we have with the largest number of resources. So this to us is a very key well. Uh,